Make sure to check out the video description for part numbers, kit part numbers, and related information regarding this video's content. If the video helped you, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button for me. Thanks for watching. We're going to remove the starter assembly on this 6 horsepower Johnson. You may want to or have to remove the starter assembly if you want to rebuild your carburetor. There's some bolts that will uh, not be easy to get to without removing the starter assembly. So we're going to show you how to remove the starter assembly and put it all back together. This will be very similar to um, the 9.5 horsepower motors. So you can see the starter handle is hollow on one end. Um, if you take a pair of needle nose, you may be able to reach down in there and get the end that has the knot in it pair of needle nose may not be uh, enough to get down inside the handle so I used a pick from pick set to dig down in there and remove the end of the rope. Once you have the end of the rope out sufficient enough to untie the knot you can maybe get a little bit more slack, tie a slip knot right behind the handle. Now you're able to remove the knot and then remove the handle. The next step is to remove the top two starter screws located here, out of view, and here. The next step is to remove the forward bottom set spring retainer screw here. This is a number eight socket. Once you have the top two starter screws removed, you can kind of move the assembly around. Also, this should fall out of place so make sure you hang on to it again we're only going to remove the forward screw you may have to loosen the rear one in order to release the starter spring hook just like that this is the starter spring hook make sure you don't lose any pieces on the bottom here once you have the starter disassembled like this, you can just simply pull on the spring and it'll remove from the starter assembly. Next, untie your slip knot so you can remove the starter for assembly from the power head. Once you have the starter assembly removed from the power head, you can remove the old rope if you intend to replace it. And it's good to remove it for the reassembly process. You can see there the lower retainer bushing. You can also see a tab or a slot on the left side of the hole down there. That is where the uh, lower spring um, retainer pin is going to slide into there. Once we have it slid into that slot on the left side of the hole there, we're going to uh, tighten back up the lower retainer bushing uh, by reinstalling the forward screw and tightening up the rear screw. Here you can see the tab on the spring that's going to slide down into there and install in the slot like such. <clears throat> now that we have our spring reinstalled, we can go ahead and reinstall the lower bushing. Inside the spring at the very bottom is also another tab. Um, you'll need to note the orientation of that tab. In this application, it looks like it's going, um, I guess, now it would be going left to right in the screen. So you'll need to note that orientation. Now we're ready to reinstall the starter assembly. Note we don't have the rope on here. You're gonna wanna lubricate this end. And also you're going to want to rotate the assembly to where it roughly aligns this slot with the slot orientation inside the spring. Once you have everything pretty much lined up, you can slide this end. Don't want to forget your um, rope uh, dowel. It's going to slide into a hole down there next to the forward retaining screw on the bushing and it's going to fit into a slot on the bottom side of this
plastic bracket right next to this forward screw on the bottom side. You can stick your finger up under here and feel it. So get it roughly in place and slide her down into position. Get the spring set. There we go. And you also get that dowel pin set in its slot as well. Right here on the bottom side is the cam follower. If you stick your finger in from this side you can move it and disengage it. Whenever we go to uh, set the spring tension, you're going to want to hold this out of the way. To set the spring tension, you're going to want to disengage the cam follower with one hand and you're going to insert a flat tip screwdriver into the top and you're going to rotate counterclockwise 12 and a half to 14 turns for the 6 horsepower for the five horsepower and twenty and a half turns for the nine and a half horsepower. Okay, you can let go of the cam follower. What I like to do is set something in here to bind it to where it won't back away while we set, while we reinstall the rope. So you're gonna to want to slide in your rope through this side. You may have to move the cam follower out of your way. Once you have your rope through here, you're gonna to wanna to tie a knot on the back side. Try to get it as close to the tip as possible. that make sure it's good and tight and you can tell which side the knot should be on because the groove starts here so you don't you want your knot on the other side of where the ropes gonna wrap around so once you have your knot there you can pull it into push it back up in there and seat it really well next thing you're gonna want to do is with your pointy end slide it through the gap there between the bracket and this pick set's real handy for this because you can kind of punch the rope through really easily and then on the back side you're gonna have to follow it through and again this pick set is just a time saver because you can buy about five of these and they have different tips and they're perfect for this and hopefully you can see but you can see the shaft that the rope needs to slide in between right there and you can just from the back side with this pick set push that rope through I don't need the pick for this once you got your rope around the starter, you can push it through the front here and pull it tight. Now you can reinstall the, the rope. Tie a knot on the end. Make sure everything's good and tight and release the pinion and slowly make sure the rope goes where it's supposed to as it recoils and there you go everything works like it should if this video helped you out make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button and make sure to check the video description for the part number for the recoil spring for the six horsepower and the nine and a half horsepower. Thank you for watching.